Welcome back, Super Weekers. The Fisho and I are joined by Alliance's mid laner Frog and talk about that victory, which gives them the only perfect record in the Super Week. The dream is alive. Frog, and a very good job from you guys here versus Gambit. Take me back to the start and what you really wanted to get in picks and bans. So, obviously, Castle Din is our first priority no matter what, but everybody bans, almost everybody bans it. Um, and then our second priority was Lulu, and they didn't ban it, so we basically just went for it because it's a really, really strong pick right now. And what about this Draven pick? It was banned yesterday against Tap, so Kassadin was actually left open. This time around he got it. Tell me about Draven. Um, he actually likes to play Draven a lot because it's a really good champion. He's solo queue and he thinks it's fun to play. And so he basically just wanted to go for it because usually Edward and Genja is playing quite passive. So you can get up the stacks and like you basically just need one kill and then it comes like as four or five kills if you have enough stacks and it's really good. And how do you feel it is then to play with Draven if you have Lulu mid, for instance? Or do you more prefer Caitlyn as more standard AV carry? What do you prefer as a team? Um, personally, when we have Lulu, we would prefer to have Draven. That's mm -hmm. also why we went for it this game, because it's really, really strong. And Draven can put out so much damage with the Lulu ultimate, because he can't die. Tell me about their picks as well, because they immediately locked in the Wukong and the Sivir, and you know, we know that you guys like to run that in combination with that Aurelia and Lulu even. Did you have to change your plan when they went for that? Um, no, we had a pretty solid plan, and we didn't even plan on picking those champions. And Draven actually does really well against Sivir as well. Um, so it's not really too much we were worried about, but they ended up with a really strong team fight comp that was actually stronger than ours, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. In that early game, very strong team fights from Gambit, and we actually have a nice example of one of those. Yeah, if we bring up the replay, it's from the 24 minute mark at Dragon. You guys go in for the team fight after Sugar actually stole the Dragon. And we have Wicked, he's going to teleport in, start the fight. And if you can just talk me through what's going wrong for you guys, because you actually end up losing the fight. Yeah, so here, Shook basically stole the Dragon. And then we wanted to back out, but we see a lot of them are getting really low. Wicked is in a really good position. Darien is uh, taking a lot of damage. So I tell Wicked to jump in. And then I'm going to Lulu ultimate on top of him, and then we're going to try to team fight. So that's what's going to happen now. And then basically, um, Kale is running right at us and just popping her own ultimate, and we blow way too many cooldowns on her. Right now, we have three or four people focusing only the ultimate, and he flashes out. And that basically makes him win the team fight here. Um, and that's basically how it went. We only went for the team fight because we thought we were stronger after we stole the dragon because they were, had a few people that were slow. And we actually also saw Shook jumping in there, kicking Sivir back to you guys, but nobody really changed towards her to start attacking her. Communication in team fights, who's running that? Because we saw yesterday all of you guys, you were just yelling out targets. Do you feel like it's maybe not working too well communication-wise, or do you like it that way? Um, I think it works really well. The only problem is Shook doesn't talk a lot. Mm -hmm. So, like, he might or might not have called that he was kicking Sivir into the team. Which, um, but usually, he doesn't talk a lot, so we don't really, like, he's not, like, really, really loud person that's, like, will shout like Aaron here, that's like, okay, he's actually like, something is going on here, right? You need to focus on that. He's not that kind of uh, person. So I think it's us, we have to like, um, be more aware of what he's actually doing on Lee Sin and when, which targets he wants to go for. So you guys, obviously this fight, uh, Kale was already super big. Tell me a little bit about the evolution of the game and your ultimate versus Kale's ultimate and how strong it was at which point and when you were able to grab the game back in your favor. So I think Lulu ultimate is more effective because it's way easier to, to use than the Kale ultimate. Kale ultimate, if you time it really well, it can be stronger than the Lulu ultimate as it can as absorb way more damage. But um, that's the Lulu ultimate where it's also a huge snug up. So I would say it's pretty even with those two champions. The only thing Lulu has is like you can double Q when you have the picks on one guy. Um, and that's really, really strong because it can hit multiple targets, whereas Kale can only hit one target with her Q. And since Kayla's nerfed this patch, like, actually pretty big nerf to her Q, like, I feel Lulu is stronger. And now, if you guys going 4-0 this Super Week, everything is looking great, playing so well. How far can you guys take it here? Have you really found the playstyle for Alliance to show that you can be a top team in Europe, or do you feel there's still some issues you need to sort? Um, we still have a lot of problems, and you saw it this game as well. Like, we actually pretty much lost, so we called out uh, Diamond, and we got a Baron off of it. Um, and then we basically had TP as well, which could put down some pressure so we could keep splitting them off. But I don't think we were supposed to win this game. Like, they pretty much had it in the back. So tell me then about the final moment. What was it was going through your head? Was it 4-0 the dream? Or was it, yes, my super team is actually coming together? I was 4 <laughs> definitely. <laughs> like, the only thing that's like been going really bad for us was like uh, the first super week was like 0-4. And 
we were like six, um, six ten before the super week, so we're going forward now. So it's like keeping up with like even uneven weeks. Yep, absolutely. Good job. Congratulations once again. And now we're going to flash back over to Joe and Quickshot for game two. Thank you very much, guys. It is time for our second game of the day as SK Gaming take on Rockat. And of course, Overpower's dominance in the mid lane has been a key component in Rockat's rise to the top of the league. And thanks to his unconventional play style and champion pool, this Polish powerhouse has earned the respect of his opponents. I liked Overpower for a long time as a player. He's very special in his playstyle. He's playing mainly very unorthodox. You have no clue what he's gonna do. Whoa. In the early to mid game? Well, Huey, 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 Huey. What is going on? Maybe he tried it in the solo queue and he liked it, and that's why he requested it. He's gonna be able to just melt a carry. So this is the pop. I mean, I'm anticipating one, two, three. I mean, <laughs> what more are you gonna say? He has his unique playstyle that differs a lot from any other mid laner. I'm not quite sure what Overpower is planning on doing with that Spurt Stone. Very interesting itemization there from Overpower. But I think he knows what he's doing, so that helps his team a lot as well. He's gonna go for Alex, he's got no mana to escape. They both flash, one more swing and the sword will do it. Great reactor flash from Overpower, allowing Rocket a strong early lead. I don't really think that I play differently. I can just play as everyone, like I can just farm. I can do a lot of games, so it's a pretty normal stuff. Yes, I think I play very really good. It's one of the best times in LoL for me now, and I think I improved a lot. He's playing really good all the time, pretty much. And there was some point when he played even better than now. Yeah, I guess it was nice to, to see myself in the uh, top of the uh, all Stars players for the mid lane. I think it's very really good for me. and. Mid in Europe was always the best one, so I think it's really nice to be in the top. There are some players that are not good in lane, but they are good in, in teamfights and stuff, and I think Overpow is ki kind of like that. When it comes to teamfight, he knows what to do. Grand Skyfall in the mid lane! He's going on towards Mr. Rala, as a stoppable force finds him! The damage is pounding down! They do manage to get four kills for zero! Rocket just melts! The super hot crew. I don't know if it's their team mentality or spirit that they they trust each other and they know they can do really good in fights. I think we have some aspects that we are good in and the team play is one of them. I think we're really good. Like you can't call it luck if we uh, won 75% of the games yet. So I kind of knew that we're gonna end up in the top three. Since now we are doing so great, everyone is so happy and just looking forward for the next matches. Hard to really argue with a lot of those opinions. Overpower has been very impressive so far. Yeah, I actually think x may have been a tiny bit harsh, saying that he's not super strong in lane. I feel Overpower does very well of late. He's not had that same impact that helped him win 75% of the games leading into these last couple of weeks. Well, let's concentrate on the game. SK versus Rockout. Heading into this one, SK holds a 2-0 lead over Rockout with their last victory resulting in Rockout surrendering in the shortest game of the split. Yeah, and in those past encounters, SK simply taken a lead during the laning phase and they did not let Rockout get back into the game. I want to talk about Candy Pan and Enrated in particular because they've had very strong performances when dealing with Seliva and Vanda. If you look at their stats, 707 and 2512, very, very good numbers for them. SK Gaming are coming into this match having beaten Millennium in a very chaotic game. They lost to Gambit yesterday in what was a fairly one-sided match, and we'll have to see if this trend is, is going to continue because I think it can definitely play on their confidence. Yeah, going to be, you know, a bit of a struggle, or they had a bit of a struggle, really, against Millennium. They got controlled completely by Gambit, and I think the usual strong lanes for SK haven't been as dominant, and Candy Panda himself actually said he wasn't feeling in tip-top shape. Yeah, I think against Rogat, we also need to keep our eyes on Jezz's. He pulled out Zed for the first time against Alex, and it wasn't too bad individually, but it was far from being impactful in the bigger picture of the match. You know, he really didn't have a swing in towards helping them win the game. Rocket, on the other hand, are now one win and two losses during Super Week. And it appears that Rocket's poor form is continuing. They've not really been the same since dropping those games over in Week 6. And we saw there, or we heard from Overpower, that he can bring out these new champions. We've seen him bring Mordekaiser. No one has had the 
Sorry, the balls to really do something like that up until now. Bring Mordekaiser to the big stage. Yeah, and I'm super glad you did point that out because, you know, in terms of their performances and in terms of, of Overpower pulling them out, it's working in his favor, but it hasn't worked out lately. And I think Saliva in particular is a player who's been struggling to make an impact. Vander is still playing well in his supports, but it isn't helping Saliva get through this big slump. He's got a 2.6 KDA over the last three weeks. It's far from being impactful. It's not only him that's been underperforming because the whole team has been losing in the early game and they're going to need to strengthen this part of their game up. Luckily, with that small win-loss buffer that they have afforded themselves, there is still some time before the end of the split to solve these problems and go into playoffs looking strong. Well, let's check out the starting lineups. On the blue side for SK Gaming is Freddy in the top lane, Svenskun in the jungle, Jezus in the mid lane, Candy Panda the AD carry, and then Rated the support. And on the red side, it is Rocket, Zazus up top, Jankos in the jungle, Overpower, the man we just heard from in the mid lane, Seliva on AD carry, and Vanda playing support. And our featured matchup of the day is between N Rated and Vanda. Both supports have been instrumental in their team successes. Vanda secured MVP in week four and then rated to help Candy Panda earn his own MVP just a week before that. Yeah, if you compare their stats, Vanda has the second highest KDA for all supports in the European LCS at 4.23. And then rated is in third at 3.32. Their kill participation is very similar, hovering around that 70% mark. The most interesting thing between these two players is their number of champions played. And rated has currently played seven unique champions and has shown an ability to have a positive impact on many of them, specializing in those hard engages. Whereas Vander, he likes Thresh. He really, 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 really likes Thresh. He's played 10 games out of the 18. And he generally plays Morgana as a backup, having played that in five more games. So Vander, I feel his champion pool is a little more limited. So with that in mind then, can we expect a Thresh ban here out of SK? I definitely think it's a possibility. Let's go with yes, instead of trying to hover on the <laughs> fence. I also think that for this game in particular, the AD carries and supports are more likely to be banned. I feel like you, you can remove some of those priority mid lane bans like a Kassadin. Jesus already won games on them in the past. We've also seen jungler bans like Pantheon and Wukong. But because Jankos and... Uh, Sven Skeron are so effective on other champions. I think for both of these teams, it's more effective to go in that uh, duo lane. And actually, both games, Caitlyn has been banned out by SK Gaming here. We theorized that they wanted to get into that vein of champion that Candy Panda has excelled so, so very well at. We'll see if that actually happens around from this one. But I want to touch on the mid laners because we've already talked a lot about Overpower and heard from Overpower himself. Let's talk about Jezus here because he himself, you know, last few games, Zed, which wasn't massively impactful, but was by no means a, it wasn't a bad terrible. Zed. No, it definitely wasn't. I think uh, Jezus on Zed actually played fairly well. He held even in his lane. Uh, he was putting some pressure onto Alex Edge very early on. Alex was playing LeBlanc, which is so, uh, somewhat of a counter to Zed. You know, got the silence that we can deal with Zed in all of his shadows. And he did pretty well in the matchup. He roamed very effectively, which is something that when Jezus is doing, he's helping SK win. For this matchup, I feel like he may go back to the slightly more comfort farm type champions because SK are not doing particularly well this super week. They're one and one. They've got this game now. They play another game later today. And I feel like if they go back to comfort, maybe it can help them uh, secure a win. And while we're talking about, you know, the comparisons of these two teams, Svenskren and Jankos, two junglers who have been so aggressive. We've seen Svenskren making huge, huge plays for SK Gaming. He's been there. I think their guide are almost, if Svenskren does well, SK Gaming follow. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And the, the most important thing for me, if you compare Svenskren and this split to last year, is he's having that positive impact on a range of different champions. Svenskren was very hit and miss last year. He wasn't always to deliver the goods. This time around, they take away one champion, he just does it on another one. Well, we'll see if, they, uh, if and what is taken away from Svenskren this time around. Actually, we are going to see the first ban being trundled there against Zazus in the top lane. There's the Caitlyn ban as well. So actually, up until now, following the bans here, SK, from their last encounter, the last one last time was Cassidy, Rock out of ban out Pantheon and Renekton. So Elise is still up, and I also wonder now if SK are going to force Rock out to either ban a Vayne or consider it. I mean, Cassidy is still available. They have to get rid of it. Yeah. So Vayne is up. If SK sees the opportunity, they could go for it. They could also first pick a Thresher. There's a number of possibilities for both of these teams. Lulu left open in this one, and they beat Millennium with Jealous on Lulu in that mid lane. 8-2-8, eight, eight, you finish with that one. 
I don't really see it that much as a Freddy champion in top lane like we've seen for, for, uh, for Fnatic with Soaz taking that one. So pretty sure that will be Jezus in the mid lane. Over on the other side though, Aatrox coming out for Zazus and a Lucian pickup for Seliver. So Seliver's gonna get the AD carry that he's played uh, an immense amount over the course of the split. Six games played, four of those are victories. So he's gonna be in a comfort pick. What I like about this pick and ban uh, phase from Rocket is they banned away Renekton, which is Freddy's most played champion at eight games. They also took away his Aatrox, who he has played phenomenally with in the games leading up to this. And because SK banned out Trundle, it means Freddy's gonna have to default to either a, a new champion or maybe pick up the likes of a Shivana, which he has also played a multitude of times. Well, what are SK gonna add into this one? Looks like we will be seeing Sivir, and if that Kale is locked in, which it will be, that will go over to Enrated. We saw them playing the Kale support actually against Alliance. Enrated ended that game 0 0 13. So, if you look at that previous uh, game where Gambit were running Kale, he's not going to have the same damage that Kale's putting up, but because the ultimate had no longer has a, a, a mana cost, it's going to allow SK to really have a strong start. In addition to the intervention, they've got Wild Growth. So if anybody is at risk of dying, you're going to prevent all that damage. Oh look, they're going to die again, you're going to wild growth them. There's a lot of I save my carry available for SK. And when you consider they're quite focused around getting Candy Panda fed and ahead, that's a good save your AD carry uh, composition so far. What a rock hat going to add into this one then. Wukong is a champion that they have visited a couple of times in here actually. And by a couple, I actually mean just once. Uh, that was against the Super Hot Crew in their loss a little bit earlier on last week, actually, where they finished 2 5 6 was Jankos on that one and taking Thresh. What a massive surprise. Vander on Thresh. Now, who would have guessed that one? That should be the 11th time that he's now playing Thresh this split. He's got a very good record with it, and I think. If I'm going to be very honest, in the last couple of games, Vander's not been able to get his AD carry kills, and he's going to need to make sure he lands some very impactful hooks against the Sivir and Kale lane early on, because once they get their ultimates, it's going to be much more difficult for Lucian and Thresh to actually kill and stick to Sivir and Kale. Final two picks here coming out for SK Gaming, where Evelyn for the jungle, of course, played it in their loss against Gambit just yesterday where Svenskrum went 3, 6, and 2, but also, importantly, maybe even more, against Alliance, where they picked up that uh, great win last week. And then Jax in the top lane for Freddy122. So uh, the Jax versus Aatrox is a matchup that we've seen. I think we've seen it yesterday, if I call correctly. In the early levels, Jax is going to have some difficulty dealing with that Aatrox. He needs to get some items up. The one thing that I like about SK's composition is they've got damage threats from four of their champions and even their jungler. Evelyn tends to build a lot of damage herself. So as Sivir's damage and sort of, uh, you know, raw output of damage falls off in this super late game, Evelyn and Jax is going to scale up. Kale's even going to potentially become a bit of a threat depending on how Enrated builds him. So SK have got good, like, uh, peak power points at multiple stages during the course of the game. And final pick in here for Rockout was Ziggs, a champion which has been both very, very good for overpower. The 6 0 4 scoreline against Gambit in their win comes to mind. And also, hardly having an impact against the Wolves. 0 1 2. Not the performance that overpower will be looking for here today. And he's obviously going to be up against Jezus' Lulu in that mid lane. And overpower. He's got to perform today. So this is a matchup that, as you said, we've, we've seen a couple times before. And Overpower in the very early levels will have a little bit of an advantage over Lulu. Lulu needs to get basically level three, have access to all of her abilities, that then she can start bullying and, and poking Ziggs down. But because of Ziggs' immense range, he actually has tools to deal with her. Farm from safely back. It's a matchup where you can get away a little less punished than you would if you were playing other champions. You know, a champion like Kale needs to get in close range and farm. Ziggs, you can sit a little further back. The one thing that I like about Rockat's composition is they've got tools to control waves. And if they can get themselves into a split push, letting Zazus go with that Aatrox, assuming he can get ahead a little bit early, I think they can have some good map control. Well, guys, with the champions now selected, let's see who you pick to win on lolesports.com. According to the numbers, 59% of you are behind Rockat. Very, very close, though. Both of these teams have been struggling this week. I think SK still looked very good coming into Super Week. They have faltered somewhat in their games. Rocket, however, they've had back-to-back -back weeks where you've sort of gone, this isn't the team we're used to seeing. And I think this is going to be a big confidence boost for whichever team picks up the victory. Let's not forget as well that 
SK Gaming seem to be Rockat's kryptonite. They haven't beaten them up until now. We're going to find out if they can this time around, though. SK Gaming versus Rockat as we jump into game and see how this one all unfolds and see if Rockat can do the business over SK for the first time in the season. Well, the time is now. They're one and two on Super Week. This is Rockat's last game of Week Eight. SK Gaming still have one more later today. And the confidence boost that we give them would be immensely useful. I think for SK, if you look at their team comp, once again, we've got a lot of mobility. Uh, Silver Lulu, Eve, you know, she, she throws on a W. She's going to be chasing everybody around. If Rockat are unable to get some poke from Ziggs onto SK, I feel like their 5v5 power is going to be overall lower than that of SK. Yes, you've got great combination of Aatrox and Wukong, but Ziggs doesn't necessarily fit that. Even if you've got Thresh throwing himself into SK, you know, Lucian, there's a lot of risk of, of Lucian just being run down. So I think there's a lot of onus and a lot of pressure on Rocker to get poke before a good team fight. So level one stacking up pretty standard. All things considered, waiting for those wards to become available. The only difference that we see is actually the sweeping lens for overpower in the mid lane. We know that he likes to build his eggs a little bit different to others. Yes, he does. Uh, he's actually built the Spirit of the Spectral Wraith in two of his previous Ziggs games. Earns him a lot of gold because he allows that passive just to, Minions you know, uh, max out. And then he kills a wolf camp every minute or two minutes and just get maximum gold efficiency from that item. The fact that he's got the sweeping lens, I think, is to deal with the Evelyn a little bit more. Deny some of the vision that SK are going to be putting down and potentially just trying to play a little bit of a control game against this Eve because the psychological pressure that Evelyn puts on a team is very, very difficult. That is that mid lane six versus Lulu. And you see junglers get things underway with Svenskun doing his blue buff. Yeah, Kos doing the red buff on his top side of the jungle. And then they'll just switch things over. That bottom lane, of course, this time around is Siva Kale versus Lucian Thresh. So Lucian Thresh is the standard LCS lane. It's the number one and number two most picked champions here in Europe. You look at Candy Panda and Enraiter. They're playing now a unique pick. This is the second time we've seen the Kale. And I think the poke that can come down from Candy Panda and Enraiter is good enough to keep Sullivan Vanda at bay as long as Candy Panda and Enraiter stay, you know, grouped, as long as they focus the right target. You've also got to remember, Enraiter's got a heal in that lane. So it is sustained versus non-sustained, meaning Salva and Vanda need to press any advantage they gain, otherwise it's just going to be wiped out thanks to Kale's healing powers in a little bit of time. So the jungler's there for a brief moment, moving on to the bottom side of the map and see if they go for anything at level 3 with those double buffs on. Let's see where they'll be actually pressuring. Mid lane, hard to really lock down with that speed out of Lulu and the ability to jump off the satchel charge from Overpower on Ziggs. We'll see where that focus comes in. I'm expecting Jankos here, you know, to just say, okay, lanes are pretty good here at the start for us. I'm going to farm up, get to six as fast as I can. I think both of the junglers have to do that. Because of the fact that both Wukong and Evelyn are very lackluster in their ganks before having their ultimates available, uh, means that we're, we're most likely going to see it, unless the team gets very overextended. I also think if I were Jankos, I would probably want to get the Ziggs or the Aatrox a little bit ahead. They've got tools that they can deal with their opponent in a 1v1 scenario. So if they can get an early advantage, it can work out for them. Zazus, he's got his dark fight. He's got flash. He's very overextended. But he's got so many tools to get away if Sven were to come in. And it's actually going to be recalling from this one. You can never be too careful when there's an Evelyn on the other side of the team. And such, he will just be recalling straight out from that one. Coming back in with Doran's blade added to the Doran shield. So. Pretty similar to what a lot of these top laners have actually been going for. An earlier kind of trio of Dorans to keep the lane stage strong. Yeah, we see the first pink ward's gone down just above Jankos' current position. And what I like about a pink ward like this, especially in the very early game, is it's quite difficult and quite risky to go in and take that down at this stage. You know, Sven really has to commit to a counter gank to find the ward and to move around. So Rocket are going to have this vision of that entrance for quite a while, quite a long time. And the efficiency and that, that information that you buy for the cost of the ward is very, very good. We'll keep an eye on how long it lasts. There is also a pink ward in Zazus's hands. I think if Zazus is going to push the wave out, he'll probably put that pink ward down in the river and just give him that extra forewarning of knowing that Sven Scaren's coming up. Moving into that one, are they going to spot him? They're 
not at this point. This could be a little bit dangerous for Freddy. There is the decoy in, and it's going to all of a sudden pop up. Freddy going to go pretty low. Will Leap Strike away? There's a dark flight in. Freddy has to flash. Very well played there. Freddy was overextended. Jenkins comes in and he punishes him. I think the fact that Freddy saved his flash until the knockup was available was the right thing to do. Was able to leap to a minion, then flash away from the knockup. But flash is down. So if Freddy pushes that wave out once again, then Jankos can just rinse and repeat. You've got that slow from uh, Aatrox, you've got the knockup as well, if he can land it. And there's the heals we were talking about. I think Candy Pan and Rated have already got some control of this lane, thanks to the very long range on that boomerang blade, and the fact that any damage that's been taken by Sullivan Vander has been healed up. They've still got their potions available. So that's how well they're, they're playing this lane. All of that sustain and that sticking power is still available to them. Yeah, actually Candy Pan, uh Running low on mana here, he's had plenty of uh, time to be thrown out that boomerang blade over towards Celebrant. Actually, they're starting to back away. Evelyn's just to the top side there by the race, just to get Vision down though, to make sure that Rockhead don't try anything sneaky in the early stages. Yeah, and we talked about how the pink wards are going to be very important for Rockhead. Exactly like we said, Zazus, he's pushed the wave up, he's got that pink ward in the river. What I like about the placements is that Zazus cannot get ganked from behind, because if Evelyn walks through the bottom river entrance by the raid camp, it's going to get spotted by that pink ward. And the ward that he's got in the river, it's going to allow Zazus to uh, extend quite deeply and, and try to punish Freddy. Sven is level 6, so in con it's kind of soft CC. The slow from Kale and the slow from Eve, they would really have to hit hard on Selva to kill him. It doesn't look like they're going to go for any sort of game. No, Sven's going to just kind of recall from that one. A couple of items and then get back into his jungle path. In the top lane, we did see Freddy actually picking up a Vamp Scepter as his first item. Of course, moving up to that Blade of the Ruin King, but probably more importantly to give him that extra bit of sustain in this lane. He does have a slight CS lead over that of Zazas at this point. Yeah, Zazas right now. Uh, we haven't really seen both of these top laners uh, trading or, or, or fighting at all. Zazas just defending his pink ward. Um, basically, just farm lane. Freddy with some good poke. But I want to see how this is going to work out. Sven, again, this would have to be a tower dive, but you can see Jezus is roaming top lane. This is something that uh, Jezus is doing more and more in the recent weeks. And there is a tower dive potential, but again, it can go horribly long. We've seen Aatrox's revive, get kills themselves. Yes, Gambit comes to mind when you think about that one. How's us there? Has Sven's going in the lane with him, but really how much of a problem will it be? Freddy is going to clear out that pink ward, gives Sven's going a little bit more breathing room, but because of that, it was kind of obvious. And Jankos has moved up now onto this top lane, and they've spotted Jankos coming through, so they know exactly where each other are. Svenskren just trying to keep out of range of Jankos, and they do a little bit of a dance around. That blue buff is respawning in, so they don't want to leave that up too late and give it over to Jezus. Yeah, I think that was the smart decision from SK not to pick a fight. You've also got to remember that if Overpower was able to move a little bit further north, he could have thrown down his Mega Inferno Bomb to get some additional damage and help out uh, the rest of his teammates. So at the end of the day, SK played that one a little bit safe. They back away. If you look in the bottom lane, you'll see that Candy Pan and Rated have been stuck to that tower for quite a while. They've been shoving it up. You can see it on the mini-map, and they're getting some pretty good damage down on it right now. Got a good CS lead as well. There's Candy Panda in that lane, not being home, as he said, to buy just yet. They've just been sticking to that turret as Jezus is going to say, ah, look, that's a pink ward. So the one that was put down after just a couple of minutes is finally going to be removed from the game, and that will give Svenskern a bit more room to play with. So the thing that's nice about that is if you look at it, I think the pink ward lasted around about, call it five and a half, six minutes-ish. All of that knowledge, all of that time frame, it allowed Zazus to stay overextended. Now that there's no more vision, Zazus cannot play that risky. He has to be a little bit safer, has to play a little bit more defensively. He's still behind a tiny bit of CS against Jax, and that lane's been even. They've caught bandaged a little bit. Oh, good damage in there, but nothing really to lock it down. And that's the thing about Kale that you're gonna you're gonna have a slow in there, but you're not really gonna have a full lockup like the Annie or the Thresh will. And at this point in time, because Candy Panda and Enraged have kept Selva and Vanda in the lane for the full 10 minutes, they're finally backing off to spend some money. Selva is a little bit down on CS. If Selva and Vanda had given up to the pressure earlier on, they would have lost their tower. 
You know, can he pan in right to sticking to it? And when in right to push down his Righteous Fury, he can push away quickly. He can also get in the tower. Jankos has Cyclone. He has Flash. They're going on Freddy. Decoy comes in. There's a surprise once again. The knock-up from Zazas. Freddy surely going down from this. He puts the Counter-Strike in, but he's not got a Flash. He falls, and that is first blood. And look at his Flash cooldown. He's just coming off there. Unlucky for him, but Svenskren trying to turn things around. This is some good damage onto both of them. Jankos is low. Zazas, of course, does have that blood well, Svenskren decides not to follow on. That was very good play from Jankos and Zazas. They came in on Freddy, and as soon as they knocked, got the second knockup down, Freddy started to channel that Counter-Strike, and Zazas and Jankos both peeled away. They stepped out of range of that stun, and then came right back in, closing out the kill. So, first blood secured for Rocket, lands in the hands of Jankos on a jungler that you want to get a lead with. You want to uh, build some items a little early on, and we'll see how Jankos actually spends his money. Talking about a sustain earlier on with Enrated's heal is now a little bit harder for Rockat to deal with. We've got a Vamp Scepter now picked up from Candy Panda on top of that BS sword that both AD carries are currently carrying. So we'll see how that makes an impact on this lane. It's currently a 20 CS lead for Candy Panda. You can see that the damage is a little bit hard to handle for Seller and he's got no way of regenerating other than that potion. Yeah, at this point in time, Candy Pan and Rated are in complete control of the lane. I think the duo is stronger. It's got long range poke, you've got a sustained lane, and you've also got, you know, the slow that can come down from in Rated. So if Lucian does get in range uh, and he uses his relent relentless pursuit, that is when in Rated wants to throw the uh, Q down. He hasn't actually skilled it just yet, so not even needing it to win out the lane. It's just purely Candy Pan and Rated outplaying Sullivan Vanda, who have been struggling lately. Almost the opposite story as well for SK. Candy Panda and N-Rate have been so, so very good recently. This mid lane been fairly quiet, to be honest. The jungle has not really been near it. We've seen both of them picking up an Athene's on Holy Grail. The only real difference between the two builds right now is that the boots of speed have been picked up by Jezus and Overpower. Shouldn't be too far behind on that front either. Top lane, we did see Jax actually picking up a Phage in there finally on top of that Vampiric Scepter. And the push up towards uh, the Cutlass has already been completed by Zezus. So at this point in time, SK Gaming are being given all the time they need to farm themselves up. Jezus is a player that likes to farm. He likes to get his items completed. He, uh, he likes to get to a comfortable itemization point before fighting. And because Rocket are playing very defensively across most of this map, it's just giving SK's, you know, Jax and Evelyn and Lulu the time to get the key items. You see Sven is sniffing around this Zazus in the top lane, but it's, it's very difficult. The wave is pushing against him. And they importantly saw that pink ward, so this one know, knows where not to go here if he wants to keep his position hidden. Actually, he's starting to make his way over towards that red buff. And Jankos takes it. That was almost too close. If Evelyn would have been on that corner, he would have lost that red buff to Sven. Three members of SK moved in to try and steal that buff away. You notice that Svenskan was hiding just out of sight in the red buff. Uh, Freddy immediately came down through the tri bush. So if a fight had broken out, SK were in a position to react. I think. With the dragon not even being considered yet for either of these teams, the next time a jungler shows his face in the top lane is when a, 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 a dragon could get started. Good damage once again by Freddy. Up there, we're going to see the blue buff being given over to Jezus once again. He's only 5 CS in the lead, but staying level at the moment with overpower. This bottom lane is where the real discrepancy is. Of course, 130 to 107 CS in favor of Candy Panda. It's been nothing but pressure in that bot lane. Nothing at all. I wonder if Candy Panda and Rated have uh, decided not to go for the tower kill, though. I think we'll keep our eyes on this lane just a little bit in these next couple of minutes because Candy Panda and Rated, in my mind, have got better wave pushing power than Sullivan Vanda have to deal with it. So you see Candy Panda, he's moving, he's actually not trying to get in range of the tower. Yes, Thresh was zoning him, of course, but I think buying time just to keep farming up, get more powerful, get stronger, and then use their superior team fighting power is what SK are looking for. And in my opinion, they're setting themselves up very well for a strong mid game showing. 
And Svenska is now moving in. And the one thing about having that tower there is a almost false sense of security for that duo lane. They have managed to land the hook on towards Enraged. Who comes there? The box goes down. Svenska is going to say hello any second, but Enraged caught out. He uses the intervention on himself. Jankos has gone very low. He's inside the brush and won't escape. Svenska and picks up the kill. The power of intervention allowing SK to pick up their first kill. Enraged was so patient with that. He didn't waste it immediately. Waited for his life to go low, popped it when all of the focus was still on him. Rocket invested so much on trying to kill Enrated that by time invented intervention came down, there was nothing left to carry on in the fight. Vanda's being pushed away. We do see that Jez has also caught out overpower. This is an uncontested dragon for SK. Yeah, Mega Inferno Bomb is the only thing to go in. Spence can actually took low from that one, but in the end only really helps them finish off the dragon kill. First one of the game going over to SK Gaming, and therefore they have a gold lead. 1,400 or so gold is the lead that they're sat on. Yeah, at this point, it's it's exactly what SK wanted to do. They they were happy playing in passive, they were happy playing in slow. They've got champions that need some items first. You know, Siva, you want to get her some itemization, and you want it grouped, really. You want Siva with a couple of other members to get even more value out of that on the hunt. And thanks to this 2,000 gold lead and the dragon control, I wonder if this might be the, the go signal to start going for the towers, allowing SK to maybe push their bottom tower down and then start rotating. They can go for some very fast tower pushes thanks to having the Siva and Lulu that's working her way towards this Lich Bane as well. Right in the jacks, never a good idea in my opinion, but we'll see how it works out for them because they are going to go for it. Zazas tanking up all the damage, Freddy, I think he's going to fall. Jankos will finish him off, but Svensko in there, he's got a red buff on. That's dangerous, that's bad news to Jankos. Good flash, Svensko gets it anyway. He's going to get the blood well out of Zazas. Has he got the damage to finish off the kill straight away afterwards? Those hate spikes coming in and it will be a double. Svensko once again in the right place at the right time. Brilliant play. Svenskeren was able to respond. Unfortunately, Freddy gave up the death, but it allowed Svenskeren to grab two more kills. There's no pressure on the tower. And Jankos and Zazas, they're trying to make it happen. He, you know, Jankos is trying to help Zazas out. It's just not working right now. That bottom lane. Actually, Candy Panda, I think, took the larger of that damage. There's a culling being used by Seliver just to try and force them away from the turret. Candy Panda still sat on that 30 CS lead. Both AD carries now with a Bloodthirster in hand. See the Berserker groups, the real difference between them at this point. Well, there we see SK again, just push them straight back onto the tower. The tower, which is They're so, so down. very low. We are going to see Jezus coming around the side. Seliver's in trouble here. There's the damage coming out. The turret goes down. Seliver's not escaping, and it will, in fact, be Jezus that gets the kill. So I got the Rome direction backwards. I thought Candy Pan was going to go mid after the tower. It turns out Jezus was coming bottom to get the tower. SK, once again, using their, the power of their team fights, the mobility and the speed, in conjunction with the... the early game lane win that they've got. Now Overpower's in a little bit of trouble. Oh, Jezus actually, that is a great satchel charge. Jankos goes in, Jezus flashes away, Overpower is going to go low. Svenska doesn't have the mana to really chase him for this one. There's the Mega Inferno Bomb. Can't finish off though. Three men low in mid, crazy fight again. The rest of SK are going to set their sights on this tower. We did see Freddy coming from the top lane and we'll see if Svenska and Jezus stick around. Going to decide against it for the time being. I thought they may have gone in for it instead. Going to back away, spend some of the gold that they've earned. So the first tower falls in the bottom lane. And I do think that Candy Panda and Rated are now going to move to middle and then top to try get the towers down. You can see they've already set themselves up in this lane. Jez is stuck around. He hasn't even decided to back just yet. It took a long time to get there, though. Allowed Seliver to get back in position. Yeah, of course, going to head top. Or is he, is he just going to farm Freddy? Diving in there on towards Zazas. And that's how it's been here. As soon as the counter strike starts swirling, we see Zazas just jumping away. They're going to tank up this turret. That will be the first of the game for Rockat as they bring it back level on that front. Freddy needs to be a little bit in careful trouble. about this one. He's going to have some pressure on him in just a second. There's the knock up. This is a finish. And no way Freddy's going to escape that. Jankos gets the kill. Yeah, I actually think it was a red buff tick. Oh, no, it may have been the, the decoy. Jankos moved away. He tried to let the kill credit go over to Zazas, and unfortunately, he got that one. So Zazas 0-1-3, got three assists. He's playing Aatrox. He's got a different build to what we've seen from Darien in the previous game. He's gone for Blade of the Rune King as his first item, as opposed to that Ravenous Hydra. He's struggling to deal with Jax. Even though Jax is 0-3-1, it is because of a multitude of ganks from Jankos coming into that lane.
CS, Freddy has died three times. He is still even with Zazus, and he's winning out. Every time we look at those one-on-ones, it's Freddy that's forcing Zazus backwards. So we'll see if Zazus can start to scale himself a little bit more. He's got some armor, which will help him deal with at least some of Freddy's damage. Blue buff there going to overpower. That bottom lane, of course, was already removed of its outer turret, but Candy Pan are N-rated. Want the farm, they've got a 40 CS lead. And they built up on that side of things, doing really, really well on getting the farm their way. Zeal is now added in as well for Candy Panda on top of his Bloodthirster. Yeah, at this point in time, uh, Candy Panda and Rated opting to push the bottom lane, as opposed to going for the likes of a tower in the mid lane. What we've seen SK do in the past is when Dragon is coming up, they have focused Dragon into tower or tower into Dragon. And we'll see if if that is a possibility for them. It is still 1 minute 10 away. You can see Jez is trying to apply some focus. Pull members of Rocket to the top lane, and then maybe go bottom. Right now, there's some pretty good uh, wave clear there from Sazos. Evelyn is headed top as well, but spotted out by that pesky pink ward that's been appearing over and over again. And Shankos has some good damage there from Candy Pan, who's, to be honest, a massive threat already, even just 20 minutes into the game. Yeah, Candy Panda is getting, he's got the makings of most likely going to be that static shiv. He's got some very good long range damage. He's going to have very good wave clear. And you see him, they're grouped up on that tower, just like we talked about. Going to go for the tower. If they can get the tower, great. Then they can go dragon. Alternatively, you can just, you know, swap pull members towards the tower and then get good positioning on dragon. So 2v2 in this top lane is Sven Skaren is clearing out a ward. Jankos may jump in on him. No knock up. Yeah, no knock up. Did get the slow in the end, but. Not going to be able to chase that one on through. Freddy, meanwhile, just continues to rack up that farm. Staying very even to that of Jankos, despite the fact that he's gone down those three times. This mid lane now is going to be a bit more focused as well with that bottom lane turret already gone. Are they going to be able to challenge for the outer mid turret? We do have Candy Panda still in the bottom lane, continuing to push them. It's so difficult to get to the tower when you're dealing with the Ziggs because of the wave clear of his bouncing bombs and the Hextech minefield. Even though the minefield was was changed a little bit now in 4.2, uh, which is what TR is, is on right now, it's still very, very effective. And you can see the rest of SK, they can't afford to back now because the dragon is up. Rockout is making a small move towards the pit, and SK is just trying to prevent them. They're trying to hold on. Hold on to the entrance, basically, preventing Rocket getting in there. Sense going down there all on his own. Stood there as... Okay, guys, are you going to come and help me with this one? There's no wards on it, so we can do it if you want, if you fancy that one. They're a little bit scared, I think, of Rocket making a positional play on them if they do head down towards that dragon. In fact, Rocket now have got wards of their own on that bottom side, or at least just went in there to check things out. But Sven's going to set up a trap to maybe have a go at Selva. Yeah, I think uh, he's seen Jankos going around the side. This is a little bit risky. SK are somewhat split up, so they need to make sure they find a target and pick them off quite quickly. It's also a lot more passive from SK. They've had the opportunity to push the tower. They've had the opportunity to go for Dragon, and they're not risking it. I think they don't want to get caught out by a multiple man. Uh, oh, they've caught Sven Skaren. Van doesn't want it. I think SK don't want to get caught out by multiple man Cyclone uh, plus Mega Inferno Bomb. You know, there is the potential for a team fight to go wrong, and they are only 1,500 gold ahead, so it's not like they can, you know, really completely dictate the, the flow of the game because they don't have as much of a lead as it maybe looks like. Back into this top lane, you see that two out of three parts now of the Trinity Force is done with that Cutlass for Freddy, so kind of splitting two directions on this one. Finally, we see SK Gaming making move. Up because Overpower and Vander have recalled into base. They know that this is an absolute freebie for them. There's nothing Rocket could have done. I mean, the, all of that, that pestering and posturing in the river, landing the hook onto Sven Skarn. I mean, Rocket would have been well aware that that was happening, but they didn't have Zazus with them. I, I wonder if that's just saying we're, we're not comfortable contesting. So, SK secure themselves a dragon completely uncontested. Grab themselves another gold lead, and a big power spike has been completed. That Lich Bane is now secured, sitting in the hands of Jezus 20 seconds ago. And that's really the big spike for Lulu's. When they've got Athena's and Holy Grail and Lich Bane, they've got a lot of mobility, they've got a lot of damage that can come down thanks to the Glittle Lancers and that Lich Bane uh, proc. And Jezus has already tried to roam a couple of times, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him moving around the map just a little bit more. And the blasting one on top of that, just a bit more power. See again, Rankos 
hanging around. Is he going to be able to beat Steady Freddy that far up the lane to get a gank off? Freddy's not had the best of luck, I think we can safely say up there. Three deaths to his name, but I don't think he's going to be lured into this one. Well, even if he is, he might have a bit of a reply with Svenskren now headed up as well. Yeah, Rocket have to be very quick. If they want to make this happen, they need to go super, super fast. Just signing not right now, just waiting for the moment. I think Freddy, he's doing very well considering how many times Jankos has ganked him. I mean, this is the fourth or the fifth time this game. Three of them have resulted in kills. He's still held onto his tower, mostly because Svenskeren has responded well. I think every time they've got a kill on Jankos, Svenskeren's been there to push Zazus and Jankos away. So, uh, good covering play, I think, from SK's jungler. But as it uh, as it stands, that ends up fizzling. Boomerang Blade, not this time. Not this time. Overpower will get that one. So we're at that low phase where both teams are trying to really figure out how they can make an opening for themselves on this one. Svenskren has killed that pink ward about 4,000 times by now. And it's got a lot of gold invested, to be honest, by Rocker into that one single ward. SK now have finally a minion wave pushing up this mid lane, and they're going to take the tower. So finally managing to secure it. Overpower backed away to go for the blue buff. That was the opening that SK needed to get on the tower. So they've got the second tower down now. They got access to both the red and blue buffs. And the way SK has been playing, it's been very passive. This could be an opening for them to get some vision control and maybe start challenging for future buffs as a group or as a team. You know, it's bad news though when a Jax goes back and finishes Trinity Force and Blade of the Ruin King within one shopping trip. Zazus is in trouble. I, yeah, I hope that Zazus checks his items next time that all comes down. There's a slow actually coming in towards him. Svenskun is there as well. Use the Blade of the Ruin King, steals all that movement speed and will recall under the safety of his own tower. Now, if SK want to stay grouped, they could once again shove this tower down. It's been a lot slower. Candy Pan has been split pushing on Siva. He's not doing it on Vayne this time around. He's been left basically alone in the lane. The rest of Rocket have come to defend. So they're going to hold onto this town for a little bit longer. Enrated is with Candy Pan in the mid lane. They're trying to outshove Overpower on Ziggs. Yeah, but as we said before, minefield, bouncing bombs coming in. Not a lot to really uh, talk about. That. Is Ziggs being Ziggs, clearing out those waves? quicker than you can really get any damage down onto the turret. One thing that SK have started to do a little bit now that those that outer ring of towers is down is get some vision inside of Rockat's jungle, but Rockat continue with these pink wards. They have bought a lot of pink wards so far this game. SK are just making it abundantly clear that they are very comfortable going into the very late game. I actually think that SK's team composition is going to outscale that of Rockets, and I feel like Rockat they're 3,000 gold down now. They need to find some plays. They need to find an area where they can force a fight to force an objective. The one tower they've secured was in the mid lane, and it, you know it's not it's not enough right now. I think 26 minutes in, they've ganked Freddy. That's the only accomplishment that Rocket can really claim to have succeeded in. Whereas SK, they're dictating the tempo of the lanes. They're dictating where Rocket defends, and SK are controlling where they're pushing. They've ganked Freddy. They've killed him two times, but. He's half an hour in now, and he's got his Trinity Force, he's got his Blade of the Ruin King, and he's going to be doing a hell of a lot of damage if you don't watch out. And specifically to those turrets, the best sound in the world, if the Jax is on your team at least, is when he really gets stuck into those. And looks like both him and Zaz are quite happy to just say, you know what, let's just get on our sides of that top lane and palm up a little bit more. Yeah, one of the things that we're seeing about that top lane match between Freddy and Zazus is that Potentially, Rocket's game plan was to get Zazas fed, get Zazas split pushing. And it could explain why Jankos is ganking there. Unfortunately, Zazas isn't actually strong enough to win those 1v1s. It, he needs the help. I mean, let's see the first duel. The moment Freddy even hints at a fight, Zazas just says, nope, and walks away. And if Rocket's game plan was to split push with Aatrox top and the rest in the middle, it's not working. I mean, look at that. Freddy just a couple of auto attacks and, and empowered, and, and Zazas backing away. Play to the Ruin King, but he's going to walk straight in towards Svenskan. But his Aatrox has got to jump. That means he can get away and is, in fact, going to recall. However, that pressure is going to open up the final outer turret here for SK Gaming. Freddy will hammer that one down, but Enrated gets hooked. This is bad news for them. Intervention is going to be used. Wild Growth was available and will be used for Jezus. There is a culling coming out. Candy Panda actually having a good go at Selva. He may just finish him off. No, not quite. He took the lantern home. Yeah, manages to get out. So Selva gets out cleanly. Candy Panda still had barrier and we actually seen and Rachel was able to get away without using that intervention so I think
that was good play. Now Jankos is the target. Oh, and he's actually going to get stunned up there ever so briefly. Where's the finisher there? And it's Svenskun now on a rampage. The Zazas jumps back in. The rest of his team is there. Can they finish off Svenskun? We see the randoins pop from both sides. Svenskun has to flash. Where's the W? He needs the W to get away from this one. Actually, he's sticking around and still doing a lot of damage. Go straight in. There's the knock-up and the shutdown for Zazas. The rest of SK is pushing the mid lane, though. They've got the inner turret. Candy Panda's at the bottom lane. They've lost one member of their team, but they have the potential to grab two towers. That was very smart play from Senskeri. Gout shut down. He's perfect score. He's gone, but that doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Mid inner turret. Bottom in a turret, Dragon as well. Massive swing. This is even bigger. SK Gaming, uh, uh, get away from that fight where N-Rated was caught. Whether or not that, that hook landed intentionally, uh, what I mean is, did N-Rated bait it? Thank you, let's start this again. Did N-Rated bait the hook or not? Regardless, they get away. Uh, Candy Panda straight up challenged Salava in the 1v1. Salava was forced to land in a way to safety. Then the rest of SK were pushing the towers. Dragon is secured, Svenskeren and Freddy hold Rocket busy in the top lane, and they get themselves a 7,000 gold lead now. They extended that small 2k gold lead by 5,000 gold over that last two minutes of play. Look how much they've got to spend as well. Two and a half thousand gold for Freddy. And he's already got his Trinity Force and Blade of the Ruin Kings. Going a little tankier just after that. I wonder if we'll go straight up to the likes of that Guardian Angel. We also have that Rabadon's Death Cap for Jezus now as well. Although I believe that was picked up slightly earlier than uh, what I'm mentioning it now. But the point is, it's got a lot of damage along with that Lich Bane. Yeah, and also with that last uh, swing of gold, Enraged has been able to finish his Talisman of Ascension. So not only do they have all of this mobility you know, from their champions and their abilities, they've now got the itemization to, to work with as well. And you've seen how effective it was for Gambit in the previous game. You know, when Gambit were running with their Sivir, uh, uh, you know, they had Wukong and Aatrox, but the mobility power of just starting fights at an instant and catching Alliance, that was very good for them. SK have got those tools available. We have to see if they want to use it though, because thus far in the game, it has really been about the lanes and the minions more than anything else. It actually has been a very passive game. And I was asking about the Guardian Angel, and I guess I got that one confirmed because Freddy went back and he picked up a Guardian Angel outright for him there as well. And yeah, that is a scary Jax. As we said, three kills, he had a horrible time in lane. I say a horrible time in lane, he died a lot in lane. But he stayed even with Zazas despite all that as Jan Kossier is actually going to be decoying out. So he actually might take more damage than he was <laughs> expecting. Or maybe not because he's got four kills and he's really tanky. Yeah, and the heal came down from N-Rated, got in the movement speed. So he's actually able to sidestep Vanda's hook as well. And again, just SK have got all the tools now. The vision game is what's going to help them win this one up. Salivar is a mile and a half away in that bottom lane. The rest of SK are denying vision at the red buff. And thanks to this damage that Freddy and Sven have built up, they can actually just two-man this Baron. The rest of SK can peel, and it looks like Rocket are none the wiser. Ah, what are, you gonna, what are they going to do anyway? They've got that defensive line set up. They're pushing mid lane out. They've pushed the bottom lane out. Selivar is down there. Banner is actually going to spot it. So they know that that's going on. There's the hook. Will he follow through? Mega Inferno Bomb. No, it doesn't get stolen. SK Gaming sneak a Baron in after controlling all the dragons. And now Jankos is going to go down. Candy Panda gets that one. This is disaster, surely, for Rocket. There's the slow one towards Zazas. Jezus comes from around the side. And there is the Bloodwell coming in. A good ultimate over the side from Selva, but Panda will lose his life. Jezus shields himself and somehow gets away. Selva needed just one more auto attack before that. That'll be a couple of kills. Baron for SK. They're going to surely push through here. They've got the, all the damage they need to get on this inhibitor. The heals are coming down. Those big shields from Jezus are available as well. SK are on the inhibitor turret. Overpower's going to have to do a monumental task. Keep it caught. Yeah, they knocked both Candy Panda and Svenska and forward from that one. The turret is going to go down. The inhib will fall as well. Three men are dead. Jankos is up in 10. Banda will be up in 10. Overpower's out for a good three quarters of a minute as Jezus may lose out. No, wild growth on himself. They're going to try and win it here. Are they going to continue to be Rockite's kryptonite? It looks like it. Freddy and the rest of SK Gaming push on towards the Nexus and go 3-0 against Rockat in the spring split of the European LCS. 
Another brilliant performance from SK. Completely controlled and calculated. SK Gaming went back to a playstyle that helped them secure all those wins a couple of weeks ago. They didn't take risks. They only played aggressive when they had reason to. And in this game, yes, it was a lot slower, but everything that SK did was for a reason and for a purpose. They had an objective in mind, and they played to secure it. Brilliant, brilliant win there for SK Gaming. That puts them in a decent position. Two for one now here in Super Week. Of course, they've got their old nemesis fanatic to face later on in the day as we see another episode of El Clasico. But this one was another sweet one. And I have to say, for Roca, sometimes you get into this position where you cannot beat a certain team. Where you, you know, in England we call it a bogey team and use other names around the world. But that is certainly what SKR to Rock at this point. 3-0 on the split. There's only one more chance for Rock to try and uh, take SK Gaming down. But I think more worryingly is not only that they can't deal with SK, they're one and three in Super Week. If you look at that game and you, you, you ask yourself, was the game plan to get Zaza's fed and going? It seemed to work. He was 3-0, but the Jax pick just countered Aatrox at all stages of the game. And then you have to just think, well, maybe the game plan is flawed, maybe it was execution. You know, there's a lot of things that uh, you have to question if you're a Rocket member. It's very nonsensical for me as well, this 1-3, because they beat Gambit in their first game, and they lost to Millennium. They lost to Alliance, who are definitely very strong right now, and to SK Gaming in here. So, for me, Rocket, the, the Rocket of old, let's say, you know, from the first six, seven games where they only really lost one to the Copenhagen Wolves before then losing out to Fnatic after that. You know, they need to find that one. And I want, I want to know whether this is teams getting used to Rockat, whether it's Rockat taking their foot off their pedal in terms of practice or, or what they're doing I really think it's in both. Game. I think it's both. I feel like teams have started to figure out that if you can control Sullivan and Vanda, prevent them getting ahead, then you can control the other lanes with your jungler. So we seem like in these games, the moment Sylvan and Vanda aren't having these game impacting moves and these, these, these kills that they can secure for themselves, all of a sudden they sort of fall to pieces in, in many ways. And I also feel like Rocket as a team are in a slump. They have to be very careful not to pull a Fnatic and get so down in the dumps about their mindset that it continues. They have to break it themselves. Well, I have to say one person that we have to highlight from this game is Svenskeren on Evelyn. 4-1-1 he ended. His performance deserved at least double those kills, though. He was fantastic again. Yeah, he did really, really well. We've actually got a replay of one of the double kills that he secured in the top lane. Let's pull it up on your screen now. And there's a moment where, you know, Shane, Freddy got ganked again. This is the second time that it happened. And Svenskeren, he's moving up the lane. He knew it was coming, but he just gets you a little late. So let's start this clip through and just run it at normal speed. You'll see that Zazas and Jankos, they're picking on Freddy. They're trying to get him ahead. They're going to kill Freddy, but what was really great is how Svenskeren deals with this gank. He manages to uh, get some damage on Jankos. The tower hit is what kills Jankos because the buff was sitting on Svenskeren. Flashes over the wall, gets those hate spikes down onto Zazas, and that is just a straight outplay. Grabbing himself a double kill, avenging Freddy's death and defending that tower as well. Yeah, by the end of it, his items were just, it was too far ahead, wasn't he? Yeah. Random in Zoman, look at the Iron Slur. He had a Hex Drinker in there as well as the Spirit of the Elder Lizard. So just generally incredible, incredible play by Svenskeren once again for SK Gaming. And don't forget, you guys can send us your favorite gameplay moments by tweeting to at LOL Esports and using the hashtag LCS Big Plays. But as we mentioned, this now for SK was for me such a needed win. After losing to Gambit, I'm sure they had their, their talks and whatever was wrong in Gambit wasn't a, against Gambit wasn't apparent here against Rocket. Completely agree. It was it, it's a very different type of team composition and I and I think it goes back to SK's roots uh, in terms of what they do well. SK played Fnatic later today, uh, two games from now in fact, and that is gonna be a very important game for them. This is gonna be a great confidence boost. The question for me is if you're Fnatic, what do you ban? How do you go into that game knowing that Nidalee is going to be a contested pick? You know, the Ziggs is still there, the Gragas is still there. These are picks that both of these teams like to play. Well, guys, it's time for a short break. And when we come back, Shox and Officio will have SK's Candy Panda with him to talk about that win. Well, there's still a lot of Soup Week left to come with Millennium and the Super Hot Crew poised to clash on the Rift. We'll be right back. They are going to go for it. Zazas 
tanking up all the damage. Freddy, I think he's gonna fall. Jankos will finish him off, but Svenskun there, he's got a red buff on. That's dangerous, that's bad news to Jankos. Good flash, Svenskun gets it anyway. He's gonna get the blood well out of Zazas. Has he got the damage to finish off the kill straight away afterwards? Those hate spikes coming in, and it will be a double. Hey,